the big in interpose between calories in and calories out, why that fails and why I, I say it's the quality of the calorie. You know, it's not the quantity of the calories. So I, I really am uh, biased against the SECO theory. And I'd rather, I'd rather you eat a lot of uh, better quality calories and be less res respective of the quantity than respect the quantity, poor quality. You know, between the two factors of quantity and quality, I would go with quality. And here's why. Between these two theories, microbiome. So it's not the, what dictates the calories that get, that uh, go in is your microbiome. So those microbes in your gut are part of the digestive process and they decide and determine how many calories get absorbed and in, and what 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 form you know nutrients are being created and and so it's this i will call it a black box of sorts because we don't really understand uh, all of the nuances and the subtleties and i'm and i'll go so far as to say we probably never will not in our lifetime certainly uh with the microbiome and so when you eat certain calories they determine the microbes inside your gut so it's the best example of this is why it's important what you choose is if I want to attract those beautiful, fun, cuddly little creatures called koala bears to my backyard, I'm going to plant eucalyptus trees, but they will do butkus for attracting, uh, say, wolves or um, uh, red cardinals, if I like red cardinals. So you have to give, you know, the, you want to ingest the the kind of food uh, you ingest dictates the kind of species of microbes that you live within yourself. Now, it's kind of getting the cart in front of the horse. You want to eat what's good for you, and when you eat what's good for you, guess what? You get microbes inside of you that are your allies. The simple best example that I come up with for this epidemic of obesity going around the globe is it's an infection, it's an epidemic infection of obesogenic microbes. They're causing obesity in people. And the reason why we are losing the war is we're not treating the infection. The cause of obesity is simply microbes in your gut. And nobody's addressing this. But step number one, when my clients work with me, is the microbiome and I address it. So I like working with people that are very obese, morbidly obese, and getting rid of their problem by addressing their microbiome. And it's also why people have cravings for food, like, and it, it's, it's never for like fat and meat and protein, it's cotton candy, it's muffins, it's pasta, it's beer, it's chips, carbohydrates. Because these particular obesogenic microbes are dependent upon those simple carbohydrates for their, their source of food. It, they're essential for them. Humans don't have, there's no macronutrient essential requirement for carbohydrates. It's fat and protein. It's essential for these species of microbes that need carbohydrates that start residing in your gut, which all leave you and you have no more cravings if you just eat healthy fat and protein and don't eat carbohydrates and then you cheat you chase those bad guys away and keep them away by eating fermented foods kimchi sauerkraut kvass uh, kefir blue cheese yogurt all plain no sugar <laughs> it's remarkable to me that people i'm telling them to cut out carbohydrates eat fermented foods don't eat sugars, then they go get blueberry yogurt. <laughs> you gotta eat plain, unsweetened, unflavored kefirs and 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 yogurts and 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 uh, fermented foods. And then they start occupying in your gut. And the other problem is, and this is why Oprah always would gain weight and lose weight, is because nobody addressed her microbiome. She yo-yoed. And if you've yo-yoed on your diet, you have not addressed your microbiome.
And once you address your microbiome, you'll start attacking that biofilm of those carbohydrate-loving microorganisms live down there by uh, a strategy of daily consumption of fermented foods. And that's what I get my clients to do. All right, let me recap here with the diet. We've said a lot of different good stuff. So eliminate processed foods. Fermented foods are good. Carbohydrates, I want to get deeper into this. It sounds like for you, at least, you're eliminating them. But if I'm somebody that comes to work with you and I'm eating a standard type diet, what do you recommend with carbs? Yeah. So um, I, I never want to have anybody think I'm a, a, a light switch guy, like zero carbs. That's for me. Now, for you, you may be able to eat carbohydrates and do perfectly well with it because you have a microbiome that allows you to consume those things and, and be healthy. I had long ago destroyed my microbiome because I was a kid who learned how to make fudge at the age of four with a candy thermometer. My mom should have probably been, you know, taken to criminally charge teaching me how to use make fudge at the age of four. But that caused me all sorts of problems having a, sh a sugar addiction. And I was making pralines by the time I was 12, candies. I mean, what kind of a childhood is that? So if you can eat fruit, you can eat carbohydrates, and you don't have visceral adiposity, you don't have deposition of visceral fat, you don't have organ fat, you don't have muscle fat, and you can do that for years and years, God bless you. It's not you, it's your microbiome. You've managed to acquire the, the right microbes to allow you to process those, mar those microbes. But you don't know whether you're in that camp unless you get in the scans, uh, or unless you have a body of knowledge that you're aware of how visceral fat manifests in the skin, all the biomarkers that I'm accumulating to find out where you may not have to do an MRI scan if you're tracking these other things. But um, I would say to you, if you're somebody that is a carb lover, you better get the scan and better see, and not, it's not just where you are in one point in time, it's where you are over several periods of time. So you wanna get a scan a few times and see where that strategy of, of and, you know, the carbohydrates you're eating, um, you can get away with and you're not causing harm um, or whether you need to make an adjustment by cutting back on those carbohydrates or maybe you need to do what I do. And I'll be honest, you know, most of my clients who come to me, uh, they're really in trouble. And so um, I get them to, to go zero carb um, first of all, it, no, nobody, nobody has come out and said that carbohydrates, science is wrong. Uh, yeah, it's a macronutrient. You need it to actually survive. We were wrong about that. Nobody, nobody's come up with a study showing that. So I start with the presumptions, stick with fat and protein. Down the road, maybe we can introduce carbohydrates down the road. And if you come to me and you want to stay with carbs, fine. I work with vegans. I have vegan clients. Uh, they eat a lot of carbohydrates. They're not, they're not eating meat at all. And so I give them strategies at least to track their visceral fat to get rid of that because I actually have 47 strategies that I, I give my clients to work on to optimize their amount of visceral fat and their, their eliminate fat in their muscles. So there's, there's a lot of other things besides diet uh, that go into, um, into that that I work with. But yeah, I, I don't think that everybody has to give up carbohydrates. Uh, my explanation is the difference between people that can eat carbs and those who can't is it's their microbiome. Got it. Talk more about that vegan piece. What does a typical vegan scan look like when somebody comes to see you? And then what's the best you can do? Do you have different goals when they're vegan to get the visceral fat down to a certain level? I'm just picturing, again, a diet so heavy in carbs, and you're talking about the ideal of being no carbs. So talk about where you can take them. Yeah, so with the vegans, um, unfortunately, I mean, I, I wish it was otherwise. Uh, they, they come with elevated amounts of visceral fat, more than the average person. Even, uh, it, you know, I've had, I, I had this one example of somebody who came to me uh, who was at doctoral level, okay? I won't give too many details, but they, they basically had earned a doctor. Very smart, very intelligent. And I said, look, I can see you got visceral fat in your face. I'm gonna scan you. And when I scan you, they were in my office you know, where I had a scanner. And I said, I'm gonna show you I'll be able to quantify how much visceral fat you have inside of you. And this guy looked at me, I'll never forget it. He looked right at me. He was in his 70s, he goes, oh, well, Dr. O'Mara, I have been vegan for 30 years 
you're not going to find any visceral fat inside of me. 10 pounds of visceral fat was revealed inside of him. 30 years vegan. What did he do? He walked out of that office, started eating meat. That's the power of the MRI. And so I have this clever little phrase, the MRI, don't let you lie. It ends the deception that you may be operating under. So get the scan and know for sure what's happening within your diet. Now, I have vegans that have elected to stay vegan and I get rid of their visceral fat. And, you know, I get them to cut out processed foods. A lot of vegans are eating bread and pasta and, you know, other things, you know, uh, pastries. <laughs> it's crazy. And they think it's okay because there's no animal product. And there's another, I have clients that work with me, help me educate this. There's also whole food plant-based. These are people whose ideology against meat is for health reasons and not philosophically to support animal rights. You know, it's a whole food plant-based is they, these are strategies for people that are identifying their interest in, in how they eat for, for health alignment to avoid meat that they think is inflammatory. So I help people to quantify these biomarkers and to make the choices that align with eliminating this visceral fat. And so, um, I, you know, even though there is a lot of tension, I'll describe between the carnivores and the vegans, and I'm sort of in the middle because I'm this doctor, I self-identify as this meat-loving doctor, and then I eat a garnish of vegetables, but only if they're fermented, and food, fruit, only if it's fermented. So pure carnivores don't think I'm carnivore, vegans don't think I'm vegan, whole food, plant-based, don't think I'm whole food, plant-based because I'm eating meat, but I, I'm right in the middle. And I tell those people, for God's sakes, at least you got to cut out the processed foods. The carnivores, you know, um, for the most part are, are a little bit better to get at those processed foods, but whatever camp you're at, you will have some improvement by cutting out processed foods. You, you'll see that improvement. And then there are, of course, a lot of other things that we've alluded to, the alcohol, the sleep, the stress, uh, the forms of exercise, um, and then, you know, other things like, you know, being outside, nature, sunshine, these other strategies. I get into a lot of things to optimize humans. All right, before we leave the carb piece, just to really hit it home, it sounds like processed foods is your biggest piece of this whole diet, but carbs is like a fast forward button. If you're willing to get rid of the carbs, that will help get rid of the visceral fat quicker. Yeah, I think so. You know, I, uh, you know, uh, it, it's not like I had something wrong with me that says the, you know, that, that the carbohydrates didn't make, I know these people, uh, dude, I was a carboholic. I know the feeling and the benefit that they, they provided me. Um, but yeah, so down the road, I hold that hope that maybe Sean could get, could return to eating some carbs, maybe some fruit that hasn't been fermented. And maybe, you know, if I could, you know, uh, even be able to eat a piece of fudge, you know, like it, it, that, it, that, it, that I could safely consume it because my microbiome protects me. It's that interface because I've acquired the right microbes to reduce that sugar, but not cause the problem of turns, turns of bad adiposity, inflammation, uh, and disease uh, from the more pathogenic microbes that I think to find most of my microbiome in the beginning. So, yeah, I think um, I, I right now take people, put them on the ultimate elimination diet. I get them on carnivore, uh, eating just meat, and then I have them garnish that meat with a little bit of ferments uh, for their microbial benefit, those microbes, not for sustenance or food benefit. You're eating those fermented foods uh, to to act as a garnish to to contribute to the digestive process beginning in the mouth. You know, chewing that meat with fermented foods so that you're interspersing these really great microbes uh, into your digestive system in your mouth instead of the bad guys you got in your mouth right now. You most people have very bad pathogenic microbes inside their mouths, and then they're chewing meat or vegetables and putting, you know, those bad microbes and then swallowing it. And then they're wondering why they, 
may not have a good microbiome? Ooh. Yeah, it's because how you started it, you know, was wrong. So traditional people, you know, ingest the Koreans. First thing, it gets, you know, a big plate. It's empty. Six little bowls around the top. And then comes the fermented foods. And then the piece of meat. And you got to eat those together, chewing them together. That's how, uh, you know, cultures of people that have had a very low level of disease for a long period of time um, eat in that particular way. So it's, it's a really great strategy. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. Nothing that I'm aware of as a physician whose passion is to help people become the best biological versions of themselves possible to optimize their health.